the ADFS um, and Netscaler um, configuration course, um, really just showing you how to you know, spin up ADFS with the web application proxies um, and Citrix Netscaler. Um, specifically in this example, um, we're focusing on Office 365, but of course the concepts are the same. Um, for for you know pretty much any application. I'm Ryan Betts. I'm a cloud solutions architect. Um, if you've watched the other two parts of this series, you'll um, know all about me. Um, so yeah, check out my blog if you have time. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is really do the pre-configuration on the web application proxy servers. So as these reside over in this network here, um, this DMZ192168 network, um, these are not in the domain. The idea is that the web application proxies are never in the domain um, as they sit in a DMZ. Therefore, these are work group joined and they're in a, a segregated subnet. Um, so what we have to do here is make sure um, A, um, there is a route from this network on these servers. So that includes you know, configuring a static route on each of the web application proxy servers. Um, configure a static route basically to point to their default gateway which has a route to the back end um, LAN 172.16.10 network and um, so we'll go through doing that in addition to that um, both these web application proxy servers need to have um, the ADFS certificates um, installed into their local um, personal certificate store or under the computer um, entity that's very important so we'll also run through doing that um, and also, um, we'll look at the configuration of the Netscaler um, and specifically um, how, it's how its networking has to be done um, in order to get it to work. So you'll see here, I've focused in a little bit on this diagram. Um, the Netscaler sits in between the two networks and it, you know, it's, it's two-legged, I would call it, so it's got an interface on both networks. Um, you'll see these, this list of IPs, um, so I'll just explain a little bit about what these are for and why we need them um, and then we in this video we'll go through defining them on the Netscaler um, so that we, so that we can configure um, and continue with the, the configuration really. So you'll, you'll notice NSIP that stands for Netscaler IP and that is on the 17216 network that's basically the management address for the Netscaler um, we're going to set this um, when we do the, the, the pre-configuration on the Netscaler I'm going to import the virtual appliance in this video and we'll do that um, we'll set that address um, this is the address that we use to connect to the Netscaler um, using a web browser. So that's why I've chose to have it inside the internal LAN. Um, we've also got two NSIP addresses which stand for subnet IPs. These are IP addresses that are used by the Netscaler to proxy configuration, uh, not configuration, to proxy communications um, to back-end servers on these on these networks. So we need an, a dedicated NSIP address on each of the networks. So I've chose dot eleven on both subnets. Um, so we'll go through and define these um, addresses. Also, you'll see these sort of objects that I explained in the last video. These are to represent um, V servers that are going to reside on top of the Netscaler and be um, like the connection point um, for the clustered ADFS and the clustered um, web application proxies. So the V server itself is a, a VIP address, if you like, that's going to sit in front of both the ADFS and the web application proxy servers. So as you'll see here, um, dot fifteen on both the subnets is going to be. Um, is going to be the the v, the v server or the VIP address um, of of um, the Netscaler V servers. Okay, so we can just jump in and start configuring um, the the web application proxy servers. Okay, so I'm back on um, my first web application proxy server. Um, as you'll see, um, I've just named it WAP1, it's got an address in the DMZ network at dot .2 um, and it's not currently in the domain. So the first stage, um, we will just quickly run through um, installing the, the certificate for ADFS. We've seen this before now, so it's nothing new. Um, and if you just remember back, um, I advise not to make the key exportable on a DMZ server. Um, so we'll just click next and finish. Okay, so that's imported. Um, now, if we just examine the network interface configuration slightly, um, I've already pre-configured this with the IP address, um, subnet mask, and gateway. Um, you'll notice that I've left DNS blank, and we'll come back to that um, shortly um, and do a host file entry update for that. Um, but you'll see the default gateway is dot one on that subnet. So I have um, 
a Windows server basically with two NICs on both networks um, that's configured to use routing and remote access um, that basically just routes between the networks. So dot one is the router in this um, in this example. Um, so with that in mind, um, we have to have a static route um, again because this is a, a um, a lab network, I don't have all sorts of dynamic routing and things like that in place, so um, I'm just going to add um, a static route and we'll just run through exactly what this configuration is doing. So from an elevated command prompt, um, root add, um, and then the internal network, so in other words, in my example, 172.16.10 is my internal network, so what I'm saying to the machine here is, is if you look for anything on the 172.16.10 network with a mask of um, slash 24, go to the default gateway which is 192.168.10.1 um, and the minus p on the end is to make the route persistent so if you don't have the p on the end um, when the machine is restarted the route will be lost so it's very important that you have that p for persistency at the end so we just click ok and that's that route added so um, now what we have to do um, is create a host file entry as we're not using domain dns so um, I'm just going to open up Notepad as an administrator and open up the host file on this um, VM. Um, so if we go to Windows, System32, Drivers, Except, All Files, and click on Hosts. So what we're going to do is we need to set um, a host file entry here for the, the vServer address, the VIP address of the backend um, NetScaler VIP that points to um, the ADFS service name. So for example, um, if you remember back to the start of this video, I say that we're going to use 172.16.10.15 um, for the vServer address um, of the backend servers. So that's the, the logical NetScaler um, IP address, if you like, that sits in front of the, the, the ADFS servers. And the ADFS service name um, we are going to use is sso.gower.health.co.uk. So, um, we're just going to click um, OK and save, save the host file entry, and then if we open up a new command prompt um, and do a CMD, it should hopefully resolve correctly. Nothing will respond um, as of yet because the vServer is not configured, but it should resolve. So that's resolving correctly, and that's, that's, that's the behavior we want, that it's resolving to that address. Um, Okay, so that is a pre-work configure. That obviously has to be done on both of the WAP servers. Um, I'm not going to do it on the other one um, on video. Um, I'm sure you can work it out yourself. It's exactly the same. So um, we'll just come back over to Server Manager and we'll just install the web application proxy role. Add role. Again, we'll run through all this stuff that I'm sure everyone's familiar with. Um, the WAP server role is part of the routing and, well, the, the remote access. It used to be called routing and remote access. So remote access. Um, don't have to add any features. Um, we just want to install the web application proxy with all the required features. So we'll just select that and click next. Again, restart if required and click install. Um, okay, so um, the, the role for the WAP server is completed. Um, so we'll just open up the wizard at the moment. Um, we're not going to run through this quite yet. Um, we have to basically do some configuration on the next scale and then we will come back and revisit this. Okay, so I'm just going to run through the initial configuration of the NetScaler. Um, I'm using the virtual appliance, but these steps are exactly the same if you're using um, the physical appliance. So I've already imported um, the OVF into VMware um, Workstation for Mac. Um, so I'm just going to um, let the appliance boot, and then we can start the configuration. Um, it doesn't take too long, um, and as part of the initial configuration, um, we are prompted um, to set a management IP address. That, if you remember back to the diagram, um, we're going to use 172.16.10.10 um, as the management address for the next gear. That means we'll be able to um, we'll be able to hit that address using a web browser, basically. So this is the this is the um, the initial configuration. So I'm just going to input 172.16.10.10. It's a full class, classful um, slash 24 network. Um, the default gateway is 172.16.10.1. Um, I'm going to use um, the number four to save and quit the configuration. Okay, so that goes away and does its things and write that, writes that to memory.
online um, and I've came across to my domain controller here um, which is in the, the LAN so this is effectively um, I guess my management station um, for lack of a better word so I've just punched this into the to Internet Explorer um, use the address the default credentials are just NS root NS root so I'm just going to use them to log in we then have to do um, some pre-configuration um, so the Netscaler IP address and the management address is already set Step two is to assign at least one subnet address. So if you think back to the diagram, um, our subnet address for the LAN is uh, 172.16.10.11. So we'll click OK. Um, the host name, we will just come in and call this you know, NetScaler1. DNS for this subnet is 172.16.10.2, which is a domain controller. We'll click Done. Um, we won't reboot at this second because we um, we have to install some license um, files. So if we click on licenses, it gives us a number of options. As this is the free edition, I'm going to use a license file that I generate from the Citrix website. Um, but to do that, what I have to do first is get the MAC address of um, get the MAC address of the device. Um, so what I have to do, um, well, an easy way to do this, um, is just use ARP minus A to look at the ARP cache in this machine. And as you'll see, uh, 172.16.10.10, which is a management address, um, resolves to this um, this MAC address here. So what I'm going to do is take a note of this MAC address and then hop over to the Citrix website where we can import it, um, import this MAC address, and it'll generate us a license for and then we can come back and um, finish off um, the post the pre-configuration I should say sorry okay so I've came across the Citrix website um, logged in and clicked viewed licenses basically and I've clicked on reallocate this is mainly because um, I already have um, a number of EPX Express licenses that I've done for various testing so I'm just going to reallocate an existing license um, in the host ID I have um, typed in the MAC address of the new um, Netscale that we're going to use in this example um, and I'm just going to click continue I should hopefully complete successfully and we'll be able to download um, a new license file. So we'll just confirm. And yep, we'll click download. That should pull it down. All good. So that's downloaded. So what I have to do is now get that onto the onto my DC so that I can um, upload it to the Netscaler that we downloaded from um, the Citrix website, it's just on the desktop here as a license file, so I'm just going to come back to the Netscare configuration and click Browse. Click on this file, um, it should import it, hopefully, um, successfully, okay, and then we have to warm reboot the Netscare, so this takes um, a few seconds before the Netscare starts responding again. This is imported and um, your Netscare reboots, um, you should hit the main screen, and if you just go down to Licenses, you'll see that you have all the features um, required um, as part of the Platinum trial license you get for 90 days. If, however, all these ticks are black um, and you only have SSL offload, you've probably not configured the license correctly with the correct MAC address. Um, so yeah, just be wary of that. Um, so for this, this video, we're just going to finish configuring the networking. Um, so what we have to do is we have to configure some more IPs. So we, we go down to System, Networking, and then IPs. Um, as you'll see, um, we've got the Netscaler IP address um, that we configured in the first stage um, at the very, you know, at the CLI of the Netscaler, and then we have the subnet address that we um, configured um, on the last um, pre uh, post configuration wizard. So I'm just going to add another one now for um, the um, DMZ network so that we have um, a subnet IP address for both of them. The networks and we'll click create. Um, so this should hopefully yeah, be enabled. That means that um, yes, there is connectivity to that network. Okay, so um, in the next stage, um, we will actually be able to um, configure the Netscale and define the, the services and the servers um, at the back end so that we can configure um, and continue with the configuration. Okay, thanks.